All right. Y'all got settled down really quick. All right. So I uh, want to, first of all, welcome everyone to the uh, Murray County Board of Education November 17th, 2016 board meeting. Uh, first item of business, we need to uh, take the row, Mr. Vice Chairman. Ms. Parker? Here. Ms. Kenzer? Here. Ms. Martin? Here. Mr. Pennings? Mr. Moore is present. Mr. Atkinson? Here. Mr. Bates? Here. Mr. Beaver? Here. Ms. Powers? Here. Ms. Marinci? Here. Mr. Dudley? Here. That's non present, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. It looks like we do have a quorum, so we go ahead and uh, conduct business. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is uh, take the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, and that's going to be led by Mount Pleasant Middle School today. Uh, we appreciate them leading the uh, pledge for us. After we uh, do the pledge, if everyone will remain standing, we will have a moment of silence after the pledge. Thank you. Uh, good evening. We have representing Mount Pleasant Middle School, Mr. Harden and Bennett Hughes, and they'll be leading the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the public for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you gentlemen for uh, helping to lead us with the pledge. All right, we're ready to move on. We need to adopt the agenda. We do have some changes to the agenda. Uh, first item that we're gonna be removing under the consent section, this is section seven. We're gonna remove section A, the minutes. Uh, there were a few uh, items, some corrections that need to be made to the minutes. Unfortunately, you all did not receive the corrected version, so we'll get that to you all so that you can review it at the next meeting. Uh, second item that I've uh, been asked to remove um, is I Section B under school trips. That uh, item has been removed. Uh, let's see. And then another additional change to the agenda. I've been asked to remove under Section 10, under other business, under Section A, we have uh, a bid regarding kids place that item will also be removed from the agenda all right so with those updates are there any additional changes to the agenda seeing none is there a motion to approve the agenda as revised all right we got a motion by mr beaver okay second by miss parker any discussion on the motion Saying that we're ready to vote. All right, that motion does pass on a vote uh, nine to zero. Moving on to recognitions and announcements. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, I believe uh, you all don't, uh, do not have any recognitions or announcements today. No, so sir. we're ready to move on to the Murray County Education Association. Mr. Huebner. Good evening, Dr. Marzak, Chairman Bates, the board. Appreciate the opportunity as we always do. Uh, we crossed wires last week, but uh, I had to leave for another meeting, but uh, I, I know that's the way it goes sometimes. I didn't think it was deliberate being overlooked, but appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I have a friend, anybody else have a friend in Billings, Montana? Uh, it's a school teacher. He won Teacher of the Year there in 2008, Social Studies teacher, and he wrote me this recently. He said that um, he understands that in the hands of a well-trained, first-rate teacher, uh, mobile technology has potential in theory. The reality on the ground, he believes, is quite different. It's just too tempting for a student. Once that phone is brought out, most can't resist texting a friend or begin playing a game right in the middle of a lesson. And he says this, in all my years of teaching, cell phones have been by far the most distracting presence. So I'm not here making a case that we end having cell phones in schools, middle school and high school. That's not gonna happen. They're here. 
uh, the genie's out of the box, uh, so to speak, and Pandora's box, and we live with it, and we do a lot of great things with it. Uh, but uh, we do have a serious problem. Uh, it, it may be the thing that I hear from the most from teachers, educators, uh, administrators too, is the issue of cell phones. We do all the discipline, people are doing it right. There's no one school doing it worse or better. Different teachers handle it in different ways, but it's a constant disruption. And rather than throw that back at you and say, solve our problem, what we want to do, I've been talking to Ms. Parker, been communicating, is be able to survey our members, bring input, and come to the policy committee meeting in January and bring you not, hey, here's the problem, what are you gonna do about it? We wanna bring you some maybe possible solutions talk about it and so forth. And I guess what I'm saying is we just need uh, to know that you're on board with what we're going to do and we'll support that. Uh, it's a huge problem. It's affecting discipline. It's very distracting. And I think somewhere down the road it's going to show up soon when kids get so distracted they keep pulling them out. We keep writing them up. Defiance. They get in school and all kinds of issues. We're very strict on that. But uh, it's, it's just growing as a problem. Um, one, if you have any response on that, any of the board members. Thank you, Mr. Huebner. As always, we appreciate the input. Okay. So let me open the floor to see if anybody has any uh, comments they'd like to make. Ms. I'll, Kinzer. I'll comment that I just commented to you at the CTE meeting the other yes, day. That was the topic of discussion among some of the teachers there, their concerns about it. So I think it would be great if you can help with the input. Thank you. We'll do so, Ms. Kinzer. All right. Anybody else? Yes, yes, Mr. Dudley. Well, I want to thank you, Mr. Hebner, for, for bringing it to our attention uh, that that it's a concern that, that your teachers' organization has. And, and I'm hopeful that we, working the teachers' organization, working with the school board committee, that, that we can find a way to resolve this problem uh, and, and uh, hopefully not limit uh, uh, the students' uh, uh, rights, but but also correct a, a, a an issue that is causing problems in our system, uh, because the whole time that teachers having to address this cell phone end of, uh, issue with any single student is taken away from her uh, exactly. time uh, to teach the rest of the class, and and, and so uh, you know I'm glad to see that we're going to try and come to some resolution to this. Appreciate your support, Mr. Dudley. All right, and I guess I'll add, you know, I guess uh, any devices, electronic devices, can be a little bit uh, threatening, yeah. especially to us adults. I think we just had a crash course orientation on how to vote electronically. Right. Uh, so it, sometimes it is difficult with those changes. I think technology is, is part of our time now, and I think it's part of our future. But certainly, uh, anytime we can get input on the best way to implement that so that our students are prepared for the world that they live in today, to get that input from teachers and all of our stakeholders on the best way of doing that, because I think we all ultimately have the, right. the same goal in mind. So we do appreciate good insight, the input. Good insight. Thank you. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huebner. Uh -huh. Moving on to public delegations, if I could ask an officer or someone to check to see if we had anybody sign up to talk about anything that's currently on our agenda. All right, so we uh, actually, we've got uh, two people that have signed up. Basically, the way our um, policy is written right now, we have uh, two different ways that we as a board, as a policy, we want public input. Uh, so we encourage public input. We do have our sign-up sheet for anybody that wants to speak about something that's currently on our agenda. We also have another procedure where if someone wants to talk about something that is not on our agenda, there's a process for doing that. And so we did receive a couple of requests. Now our current policy, the way it's written, uh, we have a seven-day business rule for when those need to be get submitted. And that's not to some arbitrary, you know, just coming up with a, a rule. It's to allow that our staff is at an opportunity to uh, get information to be able to get it to the board. Uh, these particular requests that we did receive regarding these topics um, did, didn't did make it to us within the seven business days. 
Now, I'm not opposed to us going ahead and proceeding to talk about those items that uh, did get submitted to us as a request. But again, technically, that's not uh, the way our current policy is written. So I uh, will see if anybody has any objections to that uh, of proceeding. Um, if they do, then we can uh, vote to waive that or we can go ahead and proceed. So let me just see if anybody has any objections. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, two requests. One is to talk about uh, teachers and the other one is to talk about uh, discipline. Okay. All right, so if there's no objections, we'll go ahead and call those uh, 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 individuals that did submit these requests to uh, speak to our board. Uh, first one, we have uh, Miss Anna Register. Ms. Rester, thank you for uh, coming. Uh, just, just a few guidelines. Again, we do want public input. Uh, we do, um, one of the things we do request is if you'll just state your name and then where your address is. Um, and then we do limit the input to five minutes. Now that can be extended by a board member if they want to so request, but we do try to have some reasonable time limits on that. So if you want to go ahead and get started, you just tell us your name, mm -hmm. uh, what your address is, and what you'd like to speak to us about. Okay. My name is Anna Register. I live at 712 Santa Fe Pike. Um, and thank you so much for giving me a chance to speak. Um, I have been a resident of Columbia for about three and a half years, and I work full-time as a children's pastor at a church in Franklin. Um, so working with kids is kind of my life. So I deeply appreciate educators and those who support educational efforts in communities like this. Um, so again, thank you for giving me a chance to speak. Um, so as such, because kids are such a big part of my life, education has been a big part of my life, something that has recently come to my attention that um, is a bit concerning to me um, is an issue of or lack of um, a memorandum of understanding in this county school system. Um, to my knowledge, the previous MOU, which was put in place in the summer of 2014, was set to expire after two years, which means that this past summer would have been right when a new one would have been um, agreed upon, revised, and signed, and all those things. Um, and I understand that also the board did meet with MCEA to sort of start this discussion. Um, and the agreement, while a, a, a document wasn't agreed upon, the agreement was to bring that discussion to um, the school board meeting in July. And I understand that that was tabled. And it seems that the issue has been tabled over and over and over and over again, including last week, or, or excuse me, last month um, at that school board meeting as well. Um, so then, I guess from my perspective, this leaves a whole county full of educators with no playbook, essentially. Um, when rules are hidden or not given to all the players in a game, those working in the dark are bound to feel frightened and unsure and uneasy in their own workplace. Um, and this has most certainly been the case, um, as I understand it, in Murray County. Um, and what we know about human psychology is that when people feel afraid or unsure, they are less likely to achieve the success that they're truly capable of. Um, so then when you have teams of educators who have given their entire lives and more than their fair share of time to nurturing these children in really formative years of their education, when those brave individuals um, are operating without a guide, without the rule book, which means that rules can be made up as the game is played, um, worried that their next move could get them fired, that speaking up for themselves could put their livelihood in jeopardy, these individuals cannot reach their fullest capacity. And it's not because they're not capable. It's because of lack of structure and support and empowerment that they could receive from something as simple as an MOU, a set of ground rules by which to operate, is not being addressed and given attention. It's a direct act of disrespect to the men and women who work hard to educate our children, and thus an act against the well-being of students. Educators in Murray County, good faith between the school board and educators in Murray County is being violated, and it's quickly eroding, it seems. And again, this is not only harming our educators, but our children as well. Um, and this, as, as the school board, I imagine that this would be of utmost concern to you. Um, I noticed that there's a long list of agenda items that look like things that would be included in an MOU, um, things like tenure and paid leave and all these things. And so I'd be curious as to why those are being dealt with outside of discussions with MCEA in the context of an MOU. But open, either way, opening the discussion of, rev of a reviewed and revised MOU would do wonders in not only showing solidarity with those doing the noble work of educating our children, but would ensure a more robust and enriching educational environment in which the children of Murray County can thrive. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, Ms. Rester. And, and of course, and we always appreciate appreciate input, and we always want, I think, as a board, want to have a very good working relationship with all of our employees, including sure. our teachers. I'm not sure if you were aware, but we as a board, since November of last year, were actually appointed representatives into engaging collaborative conferencing. So as far as good faith goes, we as a board have been very eager to work with our teachers uh, in that. Now, there's been some things uh, along the way, some some hiccups that, uh, um, that you know, for whatever reason, uh, have occurred, but but certainly we do appreciate our employees. We appreciate our teachers. I'm not sure if you're aware or not, but our our board actually uh, voted uh, to spend about two million dollars in order to give raises to our employees uh, this last budget year. So we certainly uh, uh, feel uh, very. Um, uh, passionate about our teachers and our employees and then also a lot of items that we've actually I know you're saying you know as far as rules and game plans we have a lot of policies in place to give guidance uh, and in fact uh, we as a board have actually uh, taken the initiative to uh, actually increase a lot of the benefits for our employees so so I understand maybe that uh, I understand your frustrations and we certainly appreciate your input but I at least wanted to give you some input of what the board sure. is doing uh, because we do want to have a good relationship with our teachers sure. That's okay helpful. thank All you right. thank you ma'am All right, so the next uh, uh, person that signed up is Karen, um, and I hope I don't uh, mispronounce your name too bad. Um, maybe just tell us your last name so I don't mess it up. Karen Olienka. Olienka, excuse and, uh, me. And I live at 1629 Williamson Drive, a lifelong resident of Columbia, Tennessee. And uh, I uh, would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak before the board. I'd like to talk with you about uh, bullying, as it is a serious problem for schools around the country. It's a nationwide problem. And um, Murray County was ordered by the state of Tennessee Department of Education to develop and implement a formal bullying program and policy that included the administration, students, teachers, and parents no later than September 2014 based on uh, an incident with a student and an issue where the parent was not able to receive proper intervention on behalf of her child. This does not appear to have been done in a manner that involves making anti-bullying part of the curriculum at every grade level there does not appear to be a uniform reporting policy district-wide, and there does not seem to be an intervention and management program for offenders in place for this district. We're asking for a more serious effort toward this issue that will avoid and prevent incidents of bullying increasing in the wake of a divisive national election. Many other districts have taken this issue very seriously. Robertson County has a 150-page anti-bullying curriculum and policy-driven booklet used to assist all parties in the school system. Also, this district has a worthy ally with their collaboration with the Boys and Girls Club who has the Stomp the Bullying curriculum in place. So Murray County already has a, an, um, a living, breathing um, opportunity to work with a, someone they already have a, a relationship with to have bullying curriculum. Schools should have bullying incidents reports and a teacher faculty committee that works closely with students and with safe school and community parent led committees. Parents should be encouraged to join. Approximately 8% of children miss school every day due to the fear of being bullied. Since 1992, there have been 250 violent deaths in our school, possibly more, and bullying has been a factor in several school shootings. Another issue uh, is the lack of training, transparency, and consequences when teachers, assistants, SROs, and other staff improperly restrain special needs students when they are engaged in behavioral issues. After a restraint incident, the Department of Education has policies in place that there must be an incident report and parents and administration must be immediately contacted. There is a national system-wide policy that is not being properly enforced, and this opens the district up to emotionally damaged children and lawsuits. Once a staff member is involved in such an incident, they should be placed on a training path, allowing them to make an, allowing them to make an informed decision. If the staff member is one who repeatedly resorts to restraint, perhaps this is not the job for them. All teachers and staff need to be properly trained and held accountable for those policies and procedures for special needs and regular students. Administrators um, need to be held accountable for those ongoing trainings and enforcement. 
Training needs to be conducted by certified trainers. We would like to know if Murray County is in the process of implementing a formal program that addresses this nationwide problem and when might it possibly be implemented. All right, once again, we uh, appreciate you coming forward and giving us the, uh, your input. And I will say that uh, you'll probably find that a lot of the board members and we as a board actually agree with a lot of the things that you are talking about. I think we as a board uh, uh, take bullying very seriously. I'm not sure if you were aware, but uh, I guess uh, Ms. Parker about two months ago, okay. So several months ago, we actually uh, had our policy committee get out our um, uh, policy on bullying to take a look at that and we actually made some modifications and we wanted public input on that uh, to be able to to know what do we need to do to try to improve that from a policy standpoint uh, now I'll also say and I'm not sure if you're aware but uh, uh, recently the district has uh, and I think we have Dr. Killen uh, that has been implementing that anti-bullying uh, program and we've actually went into a lot of the schools and brought in a speaker that has gone and toured a lot of the schools to try to do outreach to the students to try to get their attention because I think we as a board we do take that very seriously so uh, we definitely appreciate your input okay thank okay. you thank you all right moving on uh, to committee reports Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Mr. Brown, uh, I skipped you. Staff reporting. So it looks like you've got a report uh, regarding athletics. Hoping this clicker is going to work or my finger is going to be accurate, one of the two. <clears throat> Thank you all for allowing me an opportunity to, to uh, report back to you ton tonight. Uh, you asked for some things at the last uh, board meeting with the report I'd given. And also, um, I, I sent this, uh, hopefully you, all of you got this, but I sent this out via your uh, Murray K-12 email about seven or eight days ago for you to have a chance to look over it before you got here tonight. Uh, some of you did come back with some questions I tried to answer. Um, and so uh, having you sent this to you prior i'm going to sort of walk through it and then uh if you have questions i'll be glad to try to answer them that's our motto for for what we're trying to do with athletics making tomorrow better than today for every student athlete uh that's that's what we want to do also um on the 29th of this month i have uh formed a committee uh actually um Ms. Powers and Mr. Beaver are going to be part of the committee, and we're going to sit down with the school, school folks, our administrators and athletic administrators, and we're going to, uh, Dr. Woodard and myself, and we're going to develop short-term and long-term goals for the athletics in Murray County and report back to you in December with our initial plan and then have a, a, a real working document moving, moving forward. Um, <clears throat> That's the, uh, the expense report, and uh, uh, I did get every school to report back, and I went back, and I was more specific in what I asked for, and, and every school cleaned it up, and there was some disparity, some misunderstanding on what I had requested before. I feel like these numbers are, are more accurate. However, it's still in, within the, the same range that it was prior. Um, the... Uh, Someone asked about other expenses, and I'm going to email this to you tomorrow, what I'm, what I'm reading off of now. But other expenses, uh, there are so many expenses with athletic programs, and what I've done is I've just sent out work to the coaches across the county and said, tell me your highest expense for a year. And uh, I've got a long list of answers that I will, I will send to your email, your K-12 uh, email, so you can see that. Uh, everything from new uniforms to soccer goals to uh, pool rental for a swim team to jerseys and uh, field maintenance, grass seed, band uniforms, uh, camps, uh, scoreboards, um, all kinds of things in the other expense. Basically, everything falls into that. When you see other expenses, 
what takes care of most of that is donations and fundraisers and player fees also because a lot of those expenses are the expenses that come along when a player pays a participation fee they pay it to the, to the school, the, then the school collects the participation fees and pays back out to buy the uniforms or whatever items they're paying for with the participation fee. So donations and fundraisers and participation fees, that makes it the lion's share of the income for your, uh, your school athletic programs. Uh, they receive no financial report, uh, support from the board. Their, their stuff's the sustaining outside of coaching supplements for coaches. The schools take care of their own stuff with athletic programs. Uh, it's very difficult in today's world to, uh, to sustain that at times, but they, they do so. Um, they rely on donations and fundraisers to, to, get, to generate the income they need to uh, stay afloat. Some things that stand out, ticket sales, the only true revenue that's really earned by the school, everything else that fall under fundraisers or donations, um, player thing. Total expenses are more than twice the amount of what, what's generated by, by ticket sales at your athletic events. And then the TWSWA has informed the schools that there will be an increase in the officials' uh, fees for all sports going into the next school year. I think right now I, uh, there are three officials for a high school basketball game and they get $90 a, uh, a game. Is that right, Mr. McNeese? $95. $95 a, a game uh, when, they, when it comes to that. It's three times 95 to start your night. What are my responsibilities? Uh, I listed those for you. Uh, they're they're uh, of several responsibilities that I have, and I, and I try each day to, to work toward accomplishing uh, th those responsibilities, and uh, hopefully I, I, I'm able to do so. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you tonight is um, facilities, and I, I think that's um, the, the big issue in, in a lot of our, our schools. Uh, Facilities not built at the time of the construction of a building. They're, it, with, with the school, when the school system builds a, a school like Mount, uh, Spring Hill Middle School, it's an ideal situation. It was built with wonderful athletic facilities. Absolutely wonderful. I mean, they've got a real good setup up there. It's fabulous. You go back um, about 15 years and they built Mount Pleasant Middle School, nothing. A little bit further back than that, they built Cox Middle School, nothing. Uh, just, just a school, and so those schools have relied on volunteers and donations to build baseball, softball fields, soccer fields, uh, anything that's been built, uh, they rely on that. Uh, this is a press box at the, at the uh, softball field in Mount Pleasant, value of about $30,000, 100% paid by donations and by volunteers. This is a scoreboard uh, at, at Hampshire School that was uh, wrapped, that's a new thing, they wrap it. Uh, $650 paid for by the Columbia Breakfast Rotary. This is a field house that took nine years to complete at Mount Pleasant High School. If you've had not a chance to go out and look at that, I ask you to do so. It's, it's an amazing facility. It serves football, baseball, softball, has a weight room, has restrooms for the, the home football games. Uh, its value is, is near $1 million, built completely by donations and, and uh by volunteers, and it took nine years to complete, but it is complete and it is being used at this time. This is a renovation we have going on as part of an Eagle Scout project. A young man came to me and uh, wanted to, uh, to renovate the uh, dugouts at Hampshire Unit School. Uh, we worked with the county park system because Hampshire's baseball field sits inside a county park. They were warm to that. Uh, this weekend, he feels like he can almost complete that project. So the, within the next few, before Christmas, that will be complete. We're going to build press boxes at Hampshire and Santa Fe, just like the one at Mount Pleasant. We'll be going to the zoning facility sometime after the first of the year to get approval on the Santa Fe project. The Hampshire project is inside the park, and so they've already approved us to do that. Also at, the, at, uh, at Hampshire, we put down new tile in the um, uh, baselines of the basketball court. Uh, the old heating and cooling unit caused it to sweat and it run the tile. They put the new units in this year, and so we put that down in uh, – um, Officer Hickman uh, laid that tile, the SRO, at no cost to the school system for the thing. This is a tennis court. So I've shown this before at Columbia Central. Uh, there, you're not able to play on those at all. It's a $90,000 ticket to uh, re repair those, not to replace them, to, but to repair them. Uh, you're talking closer to um, 200000 to replace them. Same thing at Mount Pleasant High School, cracks in the court. 
We're working with the city of Mount Pleasant to try to get a grant. They have a new parks director. We're working with the city of Mount Pleasant. I've talked went with Mr. Keeney, and hopefully he's going to be able to help me get a grant going there. And Ms. Marinci will probably be involved in that somewhere along the way. Um, Spring Hill High School, I actually met with a gentleman today from a company in Spring Hill to talk about the possibility of a soccer field there behind the football field where they practice. Um, I've also met with a couple of folks lately there about the idea of a tennis court on that campus also. Uh, but that's in the very formative stages, but uh, uh, we're working toward that. Again, we're going to have to rely on uh, the, the kindness of, of, of merchants and things like that, so we have to get a game plan together as to how we'll do that. First, the first thing to happen there is excavating land because you're going to have to clear land and we'll have to get permissions to do all that. But I'm just right now we're sort of in the, the forming a plan to do so. Murray County Parks, I've worked with them to get a grant to build a uh, baseball field uh, bathroom at the baseball field at Hampshire School. The, uh, they did get the grant, but uh, it's a federal government grant, and those things take forever, so they say it'll be uh, next summer before they'll start construction, but they'll have a bathroom there. That's also the playground for the elementary kids at Hampshire also. They have a playground there that's owned by the parks, so that'll be good for the entire school uh, for that, that bathroom facility. Santa Fe Unit School, uh, the softball field doesn't have lights, the baseball field does. Neither has a press box or restrooms or suitable seating, but we're working on the baseball field and the softball field. There's a recreation softball field uh, that has all the components that we need, restrooms and all that stuff, and, and we've still reached an agreement that if we can renovate it to a certain degree, we could use it for softball until we could get their, their field up to par, because it's going to take some time to uh, generate the funds to do so. What are our challenges? Securing funds and materials to maintain and upgrade facilities, hiring and retaining coaches. We have 89 volunteer non-faculty coaches that have been approved across the county. Creating a limit for player participation fees because they are they're they're not consistent across the board, and that's what this committee is also going to look at. Um, the rising costs associated with operating athletic programs, everything is, is high dollar nowadays, and then transportation. And let me just say that Mr. Pearman and the transportation folks do an outstanding job of juggling schedules and getting buses ready for these people to head out, because sometimes they have to leave early, but they make it happen, and, and it's not easy, because you know as a board, those buses are stretched to the limit to just to, to tote kids, especially in the Spring Hill and North Columbia area. So they're doing a great job of getting that ready. Recommendations. Someone asked me last month that if I'd come back with a couple of recommendations, so here you go. Provide budget funds for athletics on a yearly basis. Um, if you, that's, that's a recommendation I would have. Each school uh, athletic department would be allotted funds to offset expenditures. Uh, that would be based on the number of athletic teams at each school. Also, uh, some of those funds will be allotted to assist with some of these improvements and, and additions because uh, we have a list that's uh, extremely long of, of existing facilities in need of improvement on every campus beyond the fact that we have some that need to be replaced or some that need new facilities. And raise the coaching supplement cap to 25%. Uh, there's going to be an, I don't know exactly how much, but I hope that by the first of the year when we get everything straightened out, I can come back to you and uh, demonstrate that there's going to be an, an overage um, a surplus in the uh, supplement line this time, I believe. And, uh, and we, can, we can do this. There's not but about three coaches in the county that are over the 20%. And uh, we're working on uh, pushing that back too. We're cleaning up the supplement, the whole supplement thing. But I've always believed if a man or woman puts in the hours to do a job, they should be fully compensated for that. So, um, plus it would allow us to retain coaches. Coaching's a difficult thing in today's world with the teaching demands. On my notes that I'm going to send you, I've also outlined each school about the and given you a little bit of a just a cliff note version of their facilities and what they have and what they don't have and what we're doing and what was built by the county and what was built by the school and volunteers so that you sort of have an understanding because with as many schools as we have I understand that it's very difficult sometimes for you all to know exactly what's going on outside the one that might be in your just in your district that you represent but I want you I want you to know what's going on in all these schools and where they're at or at facility wise so you'll have a better idea of what's happening there too but uh, uh, I'm going to send this to you because if I'd had it up there, I'd, I'd be up here for 45 minutes. So, are there any questions? Thank you, Mr. Brown. So, let me open the floor, see if anybody has any uh, questions or comments. Ms. Parker and then Ms. Martin. Mr. Brown, 
you mentioned the band. Is the band under athletics or under fine arts? Well, that's a good question, I guess. I, I've, I've, I've dealt with, the, like, at Mount Pleasant High School, they were raising money to get uniforms or whatever, and so uh, I was involved with that. So uh, he sent me the information back when I asked for what their expenses was. He sent me the band uniform information back, and I included that because uh, – I'm just, you know, I'm just not exactly sure because that marching band performs at the athletic contest and, and all that, so I don't know. And they exactly also perform outside of that. They, the they do. They do. They do. I don't know uh, but, if you. I'm just curious if when you got information from Central, Mount Pleasant, Spring Hill, all the ones that have band, mm -hmm. if it was included for all of them. There was nothing there was included in anything that I got that mentioned band specifically, but I went ahead and, and just put that on that list of band uniforms just to demonstrate that there's a need for uniforms in all areas. But, but uh, no one, there was nothing that was specific to me for band in what I, what I collected. I just want to say thank you for the information and the breakdown. Um, and I hope that um, our school system really does thank the people. I mean, you listed so many, and we it's brought to our attention often that so many people do a lot for our school system by volunteering just out of the kindness of their hearts when it's facilities or even at the you know school and classroom level. So I know that many of our educators, administrators, coaches, um, people in that aspect don't always get thanked as much, but I hope our school system's doing a great job at letting them know how much we appreciate that because all of, a lot of those things would not have been done without their donations right. and, and volunteering. So right. we, we really definitely want to thank them as much as possible. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Morency. Um, in looking at your uh, expenses, um, it just is glaring to me that um, security for Columbia Central, you have at $20,000. Mm -hmm. And for Mount Pleasant and Spring Hill, theirs are around two, one and 2,000, two and 3,000. It depends on, that depends on the number, first of all, the number of athletic Contest that you're going to have that you that you that you have security at. Also, the fact that several of the schools, Withorn has no security cost. If you'll look, because they have they have uh, Columbia City policemen who volunteer their time. You have other schools in the county who have officers who, when they're off duty or available, will volunteer their time for that school because that's their child's school. That's where they go to school. Uh, some schools don't have that. Some schools, and then Columbia Central is a larger school and they have a, a larger crowd, and so sometimes they may have whereas Mount Pleasant High School might have one or two security. Columbia Central might have six. So you're looking at ten times as much in security. That's what they reported, Miss Marinci. Okay. So I'm I'm guessing that is you know, you know um, I'm 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 guessing you know uh, that they don't have anyone that volunteers time to them. They pay everything out on that because that's when I in their security line item. That's what they reported to me. Thank you again, Mr. Brown. I, I did have a few questions. Um, do you know enough uh, how the other counties are doing athletics? It, it sounds like, a, as far as our model goes, we're we are funding athletics to some extent because we do the supplements. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do budget that, and then we do fund some improvements at some of the facilities. You I do. recall us you do. lighting. And lighting. Also I think we just. You maybe just built the facility, the bathroom facility at, at Central High School. And um, then I think there were bleachers and things bleachers. like that that we're mm -hmm. looking at. And I think yeah. some of these are maybe in our EMG <laughs> report to maybe make the some capital uh, improvement improvements. Mm -hmm. But so is our model, do you know if our model is similar to all the other counties around us or do other counties it's have maybe a... It's just hit or miss. Um, some systems are doing business about just sort of like we do, you know, some of your smaller systems are. Uh, Williamson County, which is next door to us, they allot each school a, a dollar amount each year for athletics, just to offset expenditures. Uh, it depends on the size of the school and the size of the program according to, I talked to the athletic director at uh, Summit, uh, and uh, he said it just depends. But also, those schools also, although uh, Summit was built with, with, with nice facilities, if you've ever been there, it goes back to them doing fundraising and, and things like that to maintain a lot of those facilities. You know, they built it, but once they built it, they said, okay, you've got to maintain it. But the main thing was they built it, you know, and right. then they said, we're going to build it, 
But when we build it, you're going to maintain it. But, hey, we're going to give you X amount of dollars every year to go into your, your school athletic fund for you to spend as you, as you see fit. It, it, let me ask you, do some counties maybe uh, try to, from a policy standpoint or a board standpoint, try to create incentives where, yes, uh, we do want uh, volunteers to help and donations and the community to help, but at the same time we will feel like you know we need to do something where maybe there's like a matching type program that would be kind of across the board district wide that if volunteers can come up with this amount, the board would come up with this amount. It, any type of programs or incentives, things like that? Do you, you Not that I know of, but when, when, I, when I've talked to folks, I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't ask that type of question about any type of matching funds. Uh, it wasn't brought to my attention. And I've, I've talked to just uh, folks in the neighboring counties. But for the most part, most folks, um, when they build a new, a new school today, it seems like they're more apt to include the facilities, whereas in years past they didn't. But at the same time, it falls back on the school to maintain most okay. of the facilities. Um, you know, and this, I point this out. Today when I was talking to the gentleman at Spring Hill High School about the soccer field and we're standing out there, he sort of epitomized what is the, the whole mindset. And he said to me, listen, I graduated from the old Spring Hill High School in 19 such and such. And he said, I've lived here all my life and I've got a business here and I love this community. My kids go to this school and I will do whatever I can to help you make sure we get this done. And he said, I know, and I, I said, I'll go out and I'll, I'll talk to people for you, whatever. And that's sort of what we rely on, you know. But there's a great bit of support within your, your communities just like that. You know, you go to any school and you'll say, give me three or four names, man. And you go to them and, and, and they're like, whatever we need to make it happen, we can do that. Right. And I guess I'm wondering from a, just a uniformity or maybe um, from a board standpoint or a county standpoint, it, rather than just – Line kind of like a an ad hoc type situation where, you know, maybe one school rallies behind you know building a field house or something like right. that. Something more from a a goal standpoint, from a board standpoint of encouraging. We're we're getting new facilities, but we're also having some guidelines or encouragement that sort of thing. Um, the other thing that I was going to mention is I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, uh, you formed this committee and uh, Ms. Powers and Mr. Beaver, uh, sounds like they're, you've uh, uh, wrangled them in to, to help with that. But um, I, I would, just some suggestions or some feedback, I would like to maybe hear uh, whenever this committee reports to us or whenever you present maybe something in draft form to us in December, maybe some discussions about what is it ultimately that we're trying to achieve from an athletic standpoint what is our values that we're trying to uh, uh, trying to do and of course uh, I, I love sports uh, my children have been involved in sports so it's a fun activity but I'm thinking from a school system standpoint what are some of the other goals that we're trying to accomplish like character development you know is that something that's going to be preparing kids um, should we have that value or that goal in mind and should we talk about that or uh, it, are there any type of academic goals that athletics can help us with uh, from incentives to some children may, may be difficult to kind of keep their attention in class but athletics is a way to kind of bridge that gap to keep them focused and that sort of thing so I'd like to maybe in some ways try to unite the two worlds of some of the things that we're trying to do from a board standpoint if we can uh, utilize athletics to be able to try to accomplish some of those mutual goals. So I, that's just some suggestions and feedback from from my standpoint. So, okay, thank you, thank you very uh, much, thank Mr. you, Mr. Dudley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, let me say I want to thank you for for the report and information you're beginning to uh, uh, bring to us. Uh, this is uh, what this board needs to uh, where we know. Uh, the comparisons between each of our schools uh, as well as, as the comparisons with us to our other uh, uh, school districts uh, uh, with similar issues and then seeing how they how they handle stuff uh, you know I know uh, our facilities uh, had had been let go uh, maintenance had had not been done on many of them and they were in great disrepair and uh, the school board has uh, spent some monies in trying to fix some of them up and then in bleacher replacement and lighting replacement and then and, and uh, you're correct Spring Hill Middle School was was built with the athletic facilities 
uh, let me say, some of the athletic facilities. I think even since it was constructed, uh, they have come back and, and wanted to add sports uh, that, that there's no f existing facilities there. You know, we, I don't know that, that, that we as a system will ever be able to provide uh, uh, facilities at every one of our schools uh, that some of our students want. You know, we, we have to just pick and choose uh, the ones that we feel like will uh, provide the uh, most benefit uh, to. At the same time, we will never as a system be able to, to afford this without uh, assistance from, from the public, whether it be uh, uh, businesses or individuals uh, contributing to, to our things. Uh, we also need to uh, try and maintain uh, uh, our existing facilities. We need to ask uh, all the students and, and everybody attending to, to take pride in our facilities and, and not destroy them. Uh, and then, and, and and then we we uh, probably do depend on uh, individual groups for maintenance, uh, you know. But you know, there's just never enough dollars to go around. And then, but but I think Murray County is trying to uh, put some dollars uh, uh, into the sports programs. What we can, we had to balance out the academics versus the athletics. And, uh, you know, so I think we're trying to find a fair balance there. And uh, so I just want to say I appreciate the work you're doing and appreciate uh, in advance uh, the work that this committee is going to do. And uh, I hope we can continue making improvements. Uh, you know, I hope that each of our new facilities that we bring online uh, will we'll try and mirror Spring Hill Middle School as close as we can. Uh, and, and, and so, uh, you know, hopefully we're moving forward. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you again, yeah, Mr. Brown. All right, so moving on through our agenda. Uh, as far as consent items, we don't have any items under the consent section anymore. Moving on to committee reports. Uh, Chair Moore, it uh, looks like your facility does have some recommendations for us, and everybody can see in their uh, agenda. Uh, the zoning facility does have three recommendations. Uh, I was just going to suggest that we may want to vote separately on uh, item number A, the warning lights, uh, and let me see if anybody else wants to pull anything else to vote on or discuss separately. Okay, we'll just take those in order. Let's go ahead and take up the warning lights. Um, Mr. Moore, it looks like your uh, uh, committee is recommending that we spend $2,940 uh, from our capital project fund uh, regarding some lights. I don't know if you want to add anything else to that. Uh, that is correct. This is something that came to us as a request from the county that they've already, uh, they've already purchased these and are having them installed. I don't believe they're installed yet. Uh, there was a request from them for us to meet half of that price, okay. and that is what came out of the committee All right, uh, so to fund that. Thank you, Mr. Moore. So is there a motion to approve and adopt the committee's recommendation? Okay. Have a motion by Ms. Kinzer. That does not require a second since it came out of committee. Any discussion on that motion? Yes, Mr. Beaver. Yeah, I think uh, the, the warning lights, I don't think is really our responsibility since they're, I guess, on government roads and I'm kind of worried that if we do this are we opening up something that we can't keep up because you know if uh, if we take if we support this what's going to keep them next week next month next year to come back expect us to do even more thank you Mr. Beaver any other discussion all right, seeing none, we're ready to vote. All right, so that motion or recommendation does fail on a vote of two to seven. 
Moving on through the agenda, we're, um, as you will see in your board packet, we have uh, two additional recommendations from the Zoning Facilities Committee. Um, I'll open the floor to see if anybody has any uh, discussion on any of those items, or is there a motion to approve those two remaining items? Okay. All right, we've got a motion by Mr. Dudley. That does not require a second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing number ready to vote. All right, that motion does pass on a vote of nine to zero, so those two recommendations are approved and adopted by the board. Moving on to, um, well, let me uh, first, for go too fast, uh, Chair Moore, it looks like your next meeting is December 1st, I believe? I believe that's correct, yes. Okay. Any other reports? No, sir. Okay. All right, moving on to uh, our policy committee. Uh, Chair Parker, it looks like your committee has uh, several uh, recommendations for us and we um, let's see it looks like uh, of course everybody can see in the packet uh, the recommendations for posting policy 6.204 as well as some updates from TSBA where we adopted some changes and that's in section uh, B we see all that in our agenda I'm not going to repeat every one of those uh, so we've got we've had that in our board packet. Um, uh, does anybody want to pull any of those items out for separate discussion and vote? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to approve for posting all of the items in section A and section B of your agenda? All right, we've got a motion, Mr. Atkinson. All right, that does not require a second since it came out of committee. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Seeing that, we're ready to vote. All right, those recommendations are approved and adopted by the board on a vote of nine to zero. All right, moving on to the next section of our policy committee report. We also have some items that have already been posted for the required time. And so we do have these uh, four policies to make, uh, to approve final changes to those. And again, you see that in section two, A through D. Uh, does anybody want to pull any of those out for separate discussion and vote? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve those changes? All right, motion by Mr. Moore. Does not require a second since that did come out of committee. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, ready to vote. All right, that motion does pass on a vote of 10 to 0. And if the minutes can reflect, that Ms. Powers is now present. Moving on, we do have uh, some recommendations from the committee to make deletions. And Chair Parker, you may have to help me with this. Is this the first reading of this or is this for final deletion? This would be the first reading. Okay, so, so what we will be voting on tonight then from the committee is to post these suggested deletions from this policy and then we'll come back uh, next month for final deletion. So. Uh, everybody sees under section three uh, all of those policies laid out that we did review and those are some of those based upon TSBA changes that we made and, and also other recommendations from our staff. Is there a motion to uh, post those suggested deletions? All right, we've got a motion by Mr. Beaver. Again, that did come out of committee so it does not require a second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, ready to vote.
All right, that motion does pass on a vote to 10 to zero. So that recommendation is approved and adopted by the board. Moving on, we have one more recommendation from the policy uh, committee. It is to suspend policy 3.216 in order to, because the committee is still reviewing that particular policy, and also the committee is recommending that we suspend any uh, changes or naming until we've had an opportunity for our committee and the board to make those final changes. So does everybody understand the committee's recommendation? Any discussion on that? Yes, Mr. Moore. The only thing I just wanted to point out is uh, I'm always leery of suspension of policy, but I think uh, the intention has been of the committee working on this. This would be a very short-term suspension because we do intend to quickly have a replacement policy in place. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moore. Ms. Martin? I just want to reiterate what I had said in committee that if we could contact Cantrell family because they did approach us with the... Uh, perfect, thank you. Any other discussion on the recommendation? Chairman? Yes. I just wanted to also make mention that this because we're suspending policy it does require a two-thirds vote um, per our legal counsel two-thirds majority of yeah that that is in our policy that we yes you're correct thank you miss parker so so again does everybody understand the recommendation did we get a motion on that recommendation motion by mr moore all right any other discussion see no we're ready to vote All right, that recommendation is approved and adopted by a vote of 10 to zero. Let the minutes reflect that is with the two-thirds majority. All right, moving on, um, Chair Parker, I believe uh, you have uh, uh, looked at your calendar and looks like you all are good with maybe skipping December. So we're all getting a early Christmas present from uh, the policy committee. Of course, we have uh, uh, Chair Moore to thank for being the uh, Scrooge, making us all come in December. So, but anyway, but we do appreciate the policy committee, though. Um, moving on to our, or let me ask uh, uh, Chair Parker, do you have any additional reports? Okay, thank you, Chair Parker. All right, moving on to community relations, uh, Chair Powers. It looks like uh, we've um, uh, maybe the committee is chosen to attend some parades coming up. Is that correct? Right, and. Um Thanks to Donna Marinci who ran our meeting. Um, but we've got upcoming Christmas parades. Um, Murray County Public Schools are going to be in three parades, Mount Pleasant and Spring Hill, which are on September, um, excuse me, December 3rd. Both of those are at 5 o'clock uh, with lineup an hour earlier at 4. And then Col the Columbia Christmas Parade, um, the lineup is at 6 p.m. on December 5th, and that parade starts at 7. So all kinds of preparations and excitement and a Christmas-lit school bus, of course. It's always exciting. So um, if anyone from Murray County Schools would like to participate, we would love for you all to ride in the parade with us. Well, sounds good. So, so again, we will be taking attendance for your community relation members to be attending the parade that night. So, but just kidding. All right. So, we're looking. We're all looking forward to that. And I think it was a great success last year, uh, the parade. And so, I've seen some of the pictures and some of the ideas. Uh, really exciting. So, all right. Uh, if that's it, uh, Chair Powers, then I'll go ahead and move on uh, through the rest of the agenda. Next item, we have uh, new business. We have the strategic planning consultant, and I'll turn that over to the superintendent. It looks like you've got a couple of proposals for us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So for the board, we have two proposals, one from Mr. Braswell, who had started the strategic planning uh, process with you, and the other one is from Dr. Register, who uh, through the MOU that we have with Belmont University has offered his services to help us develop um, our strategic plan at no cost. So um, I'll open it up for questions if anybody has any. Okay, so open the floor for any questions of the superintendent regarding those two different proposals. And just as a reminder, this is uh, during our retreat, we discussed uh, maybe having somebody, a professional, come in to help us complete our strategic plan with the ultimate goal of hopefully having a uh, plan completed uh, maybe by the end of January. So um, with that, uh, again, to see if there's any questions or discussions. If not, uh, we'll open the floor for a motion to approve one of those proposals.
Yes, Mr. Moore, and then Ms. Parker. Um, I would be happy with uh, with using uh, Dr. Register for his services, so I would put that in motion for him. All right, so we have a motion by Mr. Moore. Ms. Parker, second. Okay, second by Ms. Parker. And this is to go with the proposal submitted by uh, Dr. Register and uh, his organization. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing that, we're ready to vote. And that motion does pass on a vote of 10 to 0. Moving on to other business. Under Section A, uh, we did remove that item. Uh, so we're done with Section A. We're ready to move on to Section B. Uh, these are low bids or purchases over $10,000, which do re require board approval. Uh, Mr. Breeden, I'm, looks like the first item you have is a bid for some uh, food service equipment. Of course, uh, Mr. Breeden, you did provide a packet of information for the board members to be able to review uh, prior to the meeting. It uh, looks like the total cost of this equipment is $191,312.02, and it looks like this is going to be funds from our food service fund. Yes, sir, and if you remember a couple of months ago, I think it was actually at the September meeting, we presented to you a bid where we had bid that out for pricing, so this is using that pricing secured in those bids, but going ahead to purchase this replacement equipment using food service funds. All right, so let me uh, just open the floor to see if anybody has any questions or discussions regarding that item. And then what we may do is go ahead and proceed to the next item and see if we want to vote on these as a block or vote on these things separately. So any questions or discussions regarding this particular bid? Mr. Dudley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the, uh, the item for Central, that's coming out of uh, food service funds and nothing to do with our construction funding, correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Mr. Moore. Could we go ahead and just vote on these separately? Just to. Certainly, if you'd like to make a motion. Uh, could we make a motion to approve uh, bid number 17-025 as right. presented? So that motion by Mr. Moore is for the first bid number 17-025 is a second. Second. Second by Mr. Atkinson. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing now we're ready to vote. All right, that motion does pass on a vote to 10 to 0. Moving on to the next item, uh, Mr. Breeden, we have bid number 17037, lease of computers. Uh, yes, sir. This is actually a two-part uh, request to you. Uh, this is beginning the one-to-one -one initiative under our new diploma program. And uh, what this does is put in place a master le uh, lease agreement with Lenovo uh, Financial Services to lease those computers. And so, and then the first part of this lease, the first recommended lease, is for the computers here that are mentioned in this proposal. Uh, which will be the first phase of this, which are for the teachers who are at the schools that are going to be involved in this first phase of the program. The student computers, we actually will bring back your recommendation to lease those um, right after the first of the year because we'll be distributing those beginning after fall break to the students, but we want to go ahead and get the ones in the teacher's hands to uh, so they could begin preparing for that. This lease, like I said, is through Lenovo. It's a three-year lease, and we're actually, uh, the, the computers are coming from Howard Technologies using a cooperative purchasing agreement for both the lease and the computers with Lincoln County Schools. All right. Thank you, Mr. Braden. And let me ask Mr. Wallover, have you had an opportunity to review these documents, and do they have your approval uh, from a form standpoint? Okay. All right, so let me uh, just open the floor for questions and discussion. Mr. Braden, I did have a few questions. Uh, as far as the funding source, um, I do recall us setting aside some fund balance for some technology, but then we also, when we um, when we got the state additional funding, I believe we um, 
that would be reoccurring funds. Uh, I think we had some money for technology. Where would this money be uh, used for, the, for the, this? This is the budget. budgeted money that was supplied by the BEP funding, funding for technology. So, so this would be a reoccurring a, Yes, that is correct. About a million dollars that came out of that BEP funding for because technology. Because this is a three-year lease. Yes, sir. We're just, this is payment number one, but that is correct. we are utilizing uh, our state funding for that this. That is correct, yes, okay. sir. Uh, Mr. Dudley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a three-year lease. At, at, at the end, uh, does this company take back possession of the units, or, or, or do we have a buyout clause on them? Or? There is an opportunity to buy them out at the value then, but if we do not choose to buy them out, they'll t they take them back. Okay. So we do have to return them. Uh, this price does include... Uh, both accidental coverage, uh, they're covered by a three-year warranty, then there's a three-year accident policy if they're damaged. It also includes a program and policy that will uh, find them if they're lost or guarantees if they can't find them, they'll replace them. So it includes all three of those. Okay. Did we look at other options of, of us purchasing them outright to see if there was any comparisons, how, how they compared? Uh, we did get pricing on purchasing them outright because of the fact that uh, because of the changing technology, I think we felt like that in the long run it would be a more cost effective to lease versus purchase. Uh, Dr. Marzak yes. may want to speak to that because he's very involved in that decision making and process. And not only that, because you're leasing it out, you get to buy more devices over time. If you do it up front, the money goes away faster. And so, um, so Lenovo, really there's no benefit to purchasing up front it's pretty much 0% interest. They just take the cost and divide it into three. And so, so instead of taking out a bank loan, like going with Cal First and possibly paying one, two, or 3% interest, um, it's, it's, they just divide it into thirds. Thank you. All right, any other questions or discussion? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to approve? All right, we've got a motion by Mr. Beaver. I'll second that. Any discussion on the motion? Say no, we're ready to vote. All right, that motion does pass on a vote of 10 to 0. Moving on. We now have our uh, fall 2016 surplus inventory. Uh, Mr. Breed, may, you might give us some of the sure. newer members just kind of an overview of what this is all about. Yeah, basically we go through uh, every spring and every fall to look at equipment that is damaged or no longer usable. It's become obsolete. Uh, that, would, that would include things like furnishing equipment, and we we and there's no place to continue to store those. We sell those at auction on govdeals.com, and so they have to be presented. The list is included in your packet for you to see what we would be proposing to sell this time. Uh, you will notice there is a lot of desks in there. Uh, most of those came from Central High School. We brought new furniture. We went to every school. We distributed all of the furniture that we could use into the other schools, but these were still left over. And so it's things like that that we're uh, actually selling at surplus auction. And so we're recommending that uh, that you approve those for this fall's auction. Mr. Moore. While I would really love to hang on to some nice VCRs, I'm going to make a motion to approve the sale of these items. Motion by Mr. Moore. All right, second by Mr. Atkinson. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing that, we're ready to vote. All right, that motion does pass on a vote of 10 to 0. Moving on to uh, finance, uh, and thank you, Mr. Breeden. Um, looks like, uh, I guess, uh, Dr. Berkins is not here, so uh, Mr. Gaines, uh, I believe you're going to be filling in. Um, of course, we did receive some monthly uh, uh, reports, um, so let me, uh, and everybody's having an opportunity to review those. Let me just open the floor to see if anybody has any questions regarding any of those reports. 
All right, seeing that, we're ready to move on to budget amendments. Uh, you all have received a packet of proposed amendments uh, to some of our budgets. Um, and, of course, we, we see all those items. And what I'm going to do is just uh, we'll go through each one to see if anybody has any questions. So we have uh, amendment number 4490. Just turn on your light if you want me to stop. 4492. 4493, 4494, 4495. Uh, did I have a question on that one, Mr. Gaines? So I guess this is, generally we don't know what our federal funding is for some of these programs to a latter part of the year, and is this just simply updating our, our budgets once we know what that funding is? Or do you know? Yes, okay. I, I believe it is, but uh, Miss uh, Brenda Hammond's here. To, okay. Yeah, she can answer that question. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, amendment number four four nine six four four nine seven. Four four nine eight. All right. So, if there are no questions regarding any of those, is there a motion to approve Budget Amendment BA four four nine zero, BA four four nine two through BA four four nine eight? All right. Motion by Miss Kinzer. Second by Mr. Moore. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing that, we're ready to vote. The motion does pass on a vote of 10 to 0. Thank you, Mr. Gaines. All right, moving on, we do have some FYI items. We have, um, um, let me just see if anybody has any questions, wants any um, any discussion on any of those items. Section E. All right, moving on, uh, we're ready to announcements and communications. Um, let me first uh, thank uh, our gentleman from Mount Pleasant uh, Middle School uh, for helping to lead the pledge. And also, we want to thank uh, Mount Pleasant Middle School for all the artwork uh, to decorate in the place. We certainly appreciate that. And uh, I'm just going to take a, a just a personal opportunity to, uh, uh, I know this may be the last time I see uh, most of you all until Thanksgiving. So I just want to wish all the members a uh, happy uh, uh, Thanksgiving. Try not to eat too much. And of course, I uh, also want to just uh, uh, wish all of our staff, all of our employees throughout the school system, all of our teachers and students, uh, a happy Thanksgiving as well. And hope you, everyone is able to spend some good time with their family during the holidays. So with that, moving over to the superintendent. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. I may slow this down so my daughter can make some more tutoring, some more babysitting money for Ms. Parker. It's too early letting out. It's only been there an hour. Um, so yeah, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's a professional de development day, no uh, school for students. Uh, and then Monday 21st to the 25th is Thanksgiving break. Uh, there's a county commission meeting on Monday, November 21st, 23rd through 25th central office is closed. Uh, we'll be back here Thursday, December 1st for a zoning and facilities meeting. Remember, this is the one where Dr. Register and also uh, Joe Edgens are going to be coming. And so they've got some inf interesting information for us to share with us. Um, there are county admin meetings on December 8th and December 13th. We're back here again Thursday, December 15th for a regular board meeting. And then we could start talking about winter break and Christmas. So Friday, December 16th is an early dismissal. The 19th through January 4th is winter break, no schools. There's a county commission meeting on the 19th. 23rd and 26th central office is closed, as well as December 30th, Monday, January 2nd, were closed. And January 3rd is a professional development day. January 4th is a professional development day, and we'll be back uh, after that. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. So at this time, let me uh, open the floor for any uh, comments or input by any board members regarding anything. Yes, Mr. Dudley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Marzak, is Spring Hill still in the football playoffs? Yes, sir. Tomorrow night, Marshall County High School, 7 o'clock. And Jacob Sorrells and I, the superintendent, we have a wager. Whichever school wins, that superintendent and Marshall County High School principal, notice I'm saying that, has to come to Spring Hill High School and take a picture with a Spring Hill Raiders shirt on, and uh, we get to rub it in. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Hope I didn't so, jinx it. <laughs> hopefully not. I just wanted to con 
congratulate Spring Hill, and I, I believe they're the only uh, team or system still in the playoffs. Right? Yes, sir. Yep, two games away from the championship. Yes, sir. Good. Thank you. Here, here. We're all Raiders at the moment. So. Yes, we are. Uh, Ms. Martin. Um, just wanted to congratulate the students that performed at the TSBA conference and how proud we were of them and how um, the next day a choir performed. And I'm sure that they were loved by their own district, but I just wanted to say how we shined and rocked the house at the TSB conference, TSBA conference. So congratulations to those students. And I wanted to personally thank um, Mr. Gaines and Ms. Shirley Johnson for helping me. I was asked by the Williams family to uh, speak at Reverend David Williams' uh, worship memorial service, and I just want to thank them for their assistance and wanted to honor him uh, tonight in respect to his family and bereavement and um, just acknowledge that he was the first African-American person on our school board here in Mary County and served his tenure since, it started the tenure in 1973. And we just um, thank him for his leadership in Mary County as far as just helping children here in this county and being an educational leader. So thank you all for helping me to prepare for that and um, praying for his family. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Uh, Ms. Kinzer. As a high school teacher, I just want to thank those elementary teachers, the Baker, Brown, and Highland, my schools, uh, for letting me come and see what you do and appreciate what you do. I got to see mine working, and the kids were so engaged. And uh, I, just, I just can't tell you how much it meant to me to see the work that you're doing and, and how proud I was at, at what we're doing, what Murray County Schools are, are doing. I think it's great things ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Kinzer. All right. Um, just real quick before I let everybody get away, um, of course, we had the e-training meeting um, before we got started. I want to get maybe some input uh, from everyone as to how fast you all want to proceed with that. Uh, my thoughts were that um, maybe we try out a f this in a few committee meetings where it's a little bit more laid back and we kind of play around with it. Um, so we can uh, maybe do that. Now, of course, we only have one committee meeting in, um, in December. So I guess the question is, do we feel eager to maybe go online and go official at our first, at our board meeting in December? Or maybe we want to maybe try it out a little bit longer and maybe shoot for the end of January? Okay, so it's all up. We're putting it all on Mr. Moore. So... <laughs> December 1st. Okay. Good. So we'll good, good. That that sounds good. That's a good way to proceed. So we'll try it out then, uh, play around with it, and we'll see how it goes. And then we can uh, see uh, if we're ready to, eager to go official or maybe uh, play around a little bit more. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion All right. Motion by Mr. Moore. Thanks. Second by Mr. Atkinson. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Y'all can stay here all night. <laughs>